Is you ready? Ready? Jump off in that bitch with no cinema. Is you ready? Is you sick to take a loss? It's time for winning. Hey, Sean Tillman, uh, Bubba Bearman, Danny Dolan. Sure, really proud of uh, the guys. I, I thought we had a, a good week of practice. Um, you know, just um, you know, getting getting a full week was nice. Uh, being back at home was really nice to be back in Maryland Stadium. I know the guys were excited. Um, it was we started spring break today, so there was a lot of work the guys had to do. Uh, so it was a real tough week for them. So I'm really proud of just them being able to come out and focus and, and play as well as they played. <laughs> and have so many guys contribute in so many ways. So I'm um, just real proud of them. And obviously a team that we have a lot of respect for, a team that beat uh, Yale last month. And, and obviously we know how good they are. Questions? Coach, this week you talked about having to win one-on-one -on -one matchups against this team. And it looks like you won them all over the field. You can talk a little more about those contributions from players across the board today, the nine goal scorers, Danny amazing job on goal today if you can talk a little about that yeah um you know their their defensive pieces um are pretty darn good uh their short sticks are the best short sticks that i think we've seen so far this year um they're very good on the ball uh, they're very good clearing the ball um you actually saw them i think their first offensive possession they actually ran those guys out of the box and kept them on offense but um, it's a lot harder to get leverage against those short sticks, um, so they don't really have to slide as much. So you really need to create leverage, and you can certainly do that in a lot of different ways. We have some pretty dynamic guys, um, so that helps. But sometimes it's you know cutting off ball. Sometimes it's um, you know getting a pick or maybe a fake pick, something like that. And uh, I thought our guys did a good job. Um, you know, Christian Zawatsky on one of our first goals just runs, and, and Christian's very fast, and he was very decisive and real aggressive, which, you know, we're excited to see him do that more and more. And um, I felt like our guys, just the tempo they played with um, and the spacing and, and just some of the decisions they made, especially early on, it was great and really kind of got us going into the flow of the game. NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. Uh, it seemed to—I can't remember your point here—but it seemed like you were inverting bubble a lot. Uh, how much was that something that you saw that you thought you guys could take advantage of? Um, just feel like with with Bubba, um, you know, you saw it a little bit last week against Albany. If you saw that game, um, you know, sometimes he's behind, sometimes he's up top. Uh, we did that last year. Uh, we did that with Connor Kelly. Uh, Bubba is a guy that is really comfortable in so many different places that. It allows us to um, to kind of see if maybe we feel like we have an advantage there or up top or, you know, it allows us to maybe move, um, you know, uh, another guy up top like Jared and Jared's so good out in space. So uh, depending on, you know, what we're trying to do and maybe some of the things that we see from the defenders, uh, Bubba's flexibility is huge for us. That first half and even the third quarter, you guys were, it seemed like everything was clicking on all cylinders on both sides of the ball. What was working on, you know, the attack and on the defense during that time? Well, I think defensively, um, the guys, Coach Bernhardt had a really good plan. I think the guys had a really good feel for what we wanted to try to do. Um, and when we had breakdowns, Danny really helped us. And we mentioned it at halftime, you know, we had 14 shots on goal in the first half. They had 11. So it really wasn't that big a disparity. But I thought Dan, when we had some breakdowns, really bailed us out. Um, and, and our ability to get the ball out quickly helped us, you know, turn those stops into possessions because we really weren't doing a great job at the X. Um, so we had to be a, efficient with our offense. Um, and I think offensively, the guys were really balanced. Um, they looked for each other. They played with good pace. Um, and certainly, you know, when you get, um, you know, 17 goals and, and you have 21 shots on goal, that's still not a ton of shots on goal. But to get 17 out of 21, um, it shows the guys were working for a really good shot. And when we got our opportunities, we wanted to can them. What was the call on Jared 
when it looked like you scored, he dove across the crease? Yeah, I, you know, the, the hard thing, and, and we had a really good crew today, um, and they're, I think they're a good crew, and they're very good at communicating with you. Um, this felt like the, his angle, where he attacked, they felt like, in their opinion, um, that was illegal based on the new rules. Um, again, in their defense, it just happened so fast, and this is like one of the hard things about that dive rule is, um, you know, it happened so fast, and you have to make a judgment call. Uh, there was a guy on his back, um, so there was some contact. So, listen, in their opinion, they felt like, you know, that was a call. And, again, it's a good crew, so it is what it is. On the second one in the horseshoe end, did he step on the circle? Um, that one I could not see. So it was so far down, it was just really hard to tell. Um, Bubba, this year you've drawn the long pole the majority of the time. Uh, how have you bec uh, got a – Become adjusted to that um, defense, and what was working well for you in that matchup today? Um, I mean, coach kind of drew up a plan earlier in the week, and he just felt that I had a decent amount of size on the kid. I mean, the kid had a really good stick, um, really played well on ball, but coach thought I could get uh, pretty physical with them, so that's what I tried to do. Um, as far as kind of adjusting with actually taking a pole, um, it's different. I mean, I grew up playing attack all my life, so I was like somewhat comfortable with it but dodging up top it's totally different and I just think like a lot of the scout guys that we have playing me they, they really help me out you know they they teach me like little pointers or like things that I could do better so just I mean throughout this this journey like throughout this year um, I've just kind of like learned a little points through and through and so I mean I like to think I've gotten a little better at dodging a, a deep pull up top so Oh, but this being your second year as a starter how comfortable are you in terms of understanding what you guys want to run on offense um, I think I'm, I mean, I'm definitely pretty comfortable. We have, we have a lot of really great leaders on the field. I mean, Logan Wisnowskis, Jared Bernhardt, Snyder, DeMeo, um, Lewis Dubik, like everybody is so good at communicating. So it really makes it easy to play within it. And Coach Reppert has done such a great job, he always does, um, of explaining like the looks, where we're supposed to be. So when you're in, when you're in the game, you don't really have to think about it just because you've worked on it um, all year. And then specifically during that week, like, what we're what we're adjusting in our offense, he just described it really well. So when you get out there, it's like the second nature. So coach, you make the decision to put uh, Brett Makar on on Kirst. Um, big matchup really frustrated him. Can you talk about the confidence you have in him, and maybe even Danny as well, talking about having kind of a younger guy um, out in front taking on a big matchup like that? Yeah. What was weird was um, you know Fracaro didn't you know, wasn't playing. So that was something that we didn't anticipate because um, he had played last week. Um, so um, him not, you know, playing down low, it was like, okay, well, then who plays who? Um, so um, we had a lot of different guys on him. Um, a lot of times it, it ended up being Brett. Um, and, you know, with, with Kirst, if you just watch on film, he's been great. Um, he's had a really, really good season so far. Um, just you, you put on the film and he just is so dangerous. He's big, he's strong, he's getting to the goal, he's finishing. Um, you know, he's probably one of my, um, and certainly it's hard not to have these guys, but one of my favorite players in the country. Um, I've seen him grow up, uh, he and his dad, uh, he and I were really good friends and his dad passed away a few years ago. Uh, his dad's one of the all time best people. Um, and uh, his mom's one, one very similar. Um, so he plays the game the way his dad would have wanted him to play. And um, he, he is a bear. So I think a lot of times you saw Brett on him, but we really needed to support that matchup because he's so big. And when he gets downhill, and, and Simon Connor, their offensive coordinator, does a good job. They, they get everybody kind of behind, and the ball will be behind, and then they'll move the ball up top to him. And he just starts running downhill, and he is so big. You have to slide to him. Um, if not, like he, you know, we've seen games where he's just dominated. So, um, you know, I thought Brett did a good job. I thought the other guys did a good job. And again, I thought Jesse Bernhardt did a really good job, kind of getting our guys organized and understanding the the strengths of some of their personnel. How many faceoffs has that was Wesley Janik for twenty two? How many faceoffs has he taken for you, and how did he end up out there today? Um, so, you know, Wes was a guy that um, he has done a lot for us. You know, he's played defensive midfield, he plays wings, um, and he's also like, def like as a, a, a faceoff guy, um, he's such a good ground ball guy that we decided to to to, to have him do more facing off in in August and. Um, 
Tyler Barberich is our faceoff coach who does just an incredible job with those guys. He really liked the skill set that he brought. And the biggest thing is that he's really different than the other guys. And, and again, I think when we've had good years here, we've had different types of faceoff guys. And um, sometimes, you know, a guy like today, and, you know, you tip your hat to Fisher today, we had a, we had a tough time with him. Um, you know, you go with a guy that maybe isn't necessarily the guy that's best during the week in practice, but he just matches up better. And uh, Wes is a guy that just, you know, if, if need be, you know, he gets in there and he fights for loose balls. He's a good athlete. He's real tenacious. Um, and he's very fast. And as fate would have it, he just got it and he started running. Um, and that's one of the things he can do is create transition. So I think we were really excited for him. Um, he's been a team first guy uh, since the day he got here. He works incredibly hard. He, he got a little bit injured um, at the beginning of the year. So it's great to have him back. And, um, you know, I, I know our bench was super excited when, when, when he got that goal. What kind of advantage does it give you? Most teams are lucky to have one guy to take faceoffs. When ESPN did the preseason special, they listed both of your face-off guys in the top four. What kind of advantage does that give you strategically to now have three? Um, it's it's big, you know, because you just never know. Um, those guys are we kind of look at them like running backs. Um, there's a lot of you know wear and tear from that position. If you kind of look at it, you know, you're in a crouch position. There's a lot of contact. Um, so to have three guys um, that you can rotate, especially with injuries, uh, matchups, whatever it may be, I think there's a lot of value to practice to have you know three guys like that because they're really competing every day, um, and that competition brings out the best in, in all those guys. Danny, it looks like you were seeing the ball really, really well today from the get-go. Two spectacular saves in close, almost had a third one that was you know, unbelievably would have been amazing. Uh, can you talk about how you were seeing the ball today and what was happening in front of you? Um, yeah, well, there's just a couple of things, I guess, that goes into it. I mean, first and foremost for me, like, uh, it's in my faith, I guess, the, all the glory goes to God. But then also, Coach Tillman does such a great job throughout the week, like, working with me and um, just helping me do better. And then our defense did such a great job. You know, our coaches put together such a great game plan. Um, and then not even, like, even also the uh, scout team does such a great job all week preparing us, like, with the looks they'll get. So, you know, it's, I feel prepared going to the game. Same in the O, did such a great job. You know, they really paced us and uh, did such a great job on O. It really made my job a lot easier. So I really, I think, and then if you look at the end of the game, like, Drew Morris comes in, he lights out. So just really a credit to our defense and our coaching staff, just how well they prepare us. It's not really anything I did in particular. Danny, bar barring off that question, when you make two saves like that of the point blank variety in the first quarter, how much does that set the tone for you for the rest of the game? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't really like to think about it like that. You know, next shot, good or bad, I just kind of want to focus on the next one because it's not really anything that can do for me. Um, you know, I don't try, try not to be like, I mean, it's great to make those saves, but it's good also to not have like your confidence, I guess, be based off of like saves in general. It's like um, the next one, really. So, yeah. You sound like Braden Holtby talking about the next save, but at some point, do you realize that you're hot? Or does you do you have to concentrate to keep that out of your mindset? Uh, no, I can I don't. I really, honestly, I know <coughs> like hot or cold. I guess it's just the next one. How long have you thought about the game in, in this way? Uh, since really, since I got here, Coach Tillman really uh, he does such a great job coaching and working with the goalies. And you know, I had uh, if you look at like film from when I was in high school, or even at UMass, I really struggled with that. So uh, once I got here, Coach Tillman just really emphasizing the next shot and. Uh, really just changed it all, I guess. He's such a great coach. All the coaches are great. And, you know, working with uh, all the guys in practice, it just really helps a lot. One more on that line, if that's okay. Uh, how long did it take for that thought process to actually be your belief? Um, you know, I'm, I don't know. I guess, uh, I don't know. Coach, how long would you say? <laughs> <laughs> you can't answer a question with a question. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, just good reminder. I mean, uh, I think even sometimes he'll catch me or not, or coach just reminding me on the field, just standing next one, next one, and just uh, really helping me that way. And then our defense is so great, you know. I just kind of, you look out at like Curtis or Brett or Jack or, or D Middies, um, or, and it really just kind of reminds you that the next one's going to be, they're just doing their job and just get the next one. Or do you look at, Oh, I mean the guy misses a shot or whatever, and then gets the next one. It's kind of just all over the field. Do you notice the next play mentality that coach preaches? 
You guys? All right. Thanks, Thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you.